Uh, good evening or good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I would like uh, to thank uh, Foundation Mario for inviting me to, to, to participate in this outstanding scientific uh, uh, forum. Also, I would like to thank the organizers, Cindy and Valentina, for the hard work that this symposium is being materialized. I come from North Africa, and I come from Libya. Libya is a vast country. Its territory extends for nearly 1.8 square kilometer. It is surrounded by six African countries, Egypt, Sudan, Niger, Chad, and Algeria, and Tunisia from the west. It extends approximately on the Mediterranean, facing Europe for about 2,000 kilometers from west to the east. Uh, it is a relatively big country because it is one and a half a size as, as our next door neighbor from west, Egypt. <coughs> Libya is, uh, population is about, uh, Libya population is about 7 million. It is ranked 106 in terms of population density worldwide out of 193 countries. It has relatively a high birth cohort, which is about 230,000 per year, nearly 3.5% annual increase, and it is notably over the last years of conflict, the childbirth has increased by nearly 80,000 per year. Approximately 40% of the population under the age of 20, and 4% of its population are above the age of 65. The overall population density is about four per square, one square kilometer. 85% uh, are in the coastal area, over 2 million in Tripoli, the capital and the second city is Benghazi, is over 1 million. We have a lot of internal refugees in the country, and nearly between 1.5 million now are moving to the coastal strip. Geographically, Libya is divided into three districts or three regions, the eastern region, the western region, and the south region. Doesn't move. Okay. Now, I take to you, I think just to tell you that uh, uh, Edward Jennifer was the man who has, who has eradicated small box. The development of small box as a public health tool it's attributed to Edward Jennifer and his experiment on cowpox in the year 1796. Smallpox, smallpox vaccine was the first vaccine to deploy it widely in a human. It was obvious that smallpox was the first human infectious disease to be, re, to be eradicated by vaccination. A milestone achieved nearly 200 years in the year 1979. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll take you through the evolution of our vaccine program. The Libyan vaccine program is long lasting. It started in the 60s of last century, and it is being upgraded and evolved continuously with time. It is worth mentioning, perhaps Libya was the first country to introduce BCG vaccine on massive scale. Furthermore, Libya has passed a legislation that it made BCG vaccination is compulsory. And for the last nearly 30 years, BCG vaccination is 100%. The legislation says that you cannot 
register your child in the mercy ability till you produce the certificate of vaccination in BCG, and we have employed so many good nurses to do that job, and that's being done in private or public sector, which take the majority. In Libya, 95 to 96% of deliveries are conducted in hospital. The, the program, as, is, as, as I mentioned, that being upgraded uh, continuously, MMR was introduced in the 90s and being given at 12 and 18 months. Hepatitis B vaccine was first introduced in Libya in 1993. Then we went back and immunized in 91 and 90, and 90. Then we went back further and immunized 88, 89, and 90. And as I'm standing here, any, by, any child born in Libya from 1st, 1st, 1988 is being immunized against hepatitis B. Now, in a month, we'll finish 30 years of hepatitis B immunization. The last case of bilateral polio in Libya was documented in October 1991 in the Eastern Mountain in the city of El Mersh. Libya has been free since then. Libya has been through the switch process, changing the country from TOBV to BIOBV in May last year. And this actually changes occurred even in the fighting zone in the country. Nowadays, Immunization against poliomyelitis includes two doses of BOBV at birth and at nine months. And we give five doses of injectable polio at two months, four months, six months, 18 months, 18 and six years of age. In response to reported cases of bilateral polio in Syria, and Nigeria, Libya has conducted four polio campaign, vaccination campaign, national campaign for polio malaise vaccination. The, the Libyan vaccine program was started in the 60s and it was immunized at the beginning of the program. And I'll take you through it from the sicknesses up to two days. During the sicknesses, we were immunized against PCG, measles, and paralytic polio diphtheria, tetanus, and whooping cough. In the year 2007, we started to give BCG to OBV and hepatitis B. At birth, at two months, we give the Pinta, DTB, whole cell, HBV and HIV, plus oral polio, and that's being repeated at four and six months. At 12 months, we have given the MMR and OBV, and at 18 months, we have given D DBT and MMR. At six years, we have given DT and OBV, and at 15 years, we give TD, adult, and OBV. Then, the program was abrogated again, and the timing red and the antigen red, this uh, where the changes has occurred. We continued with uh, BCG, OBV, and hepatitis B at birth. And since they are given together, the intake of these antigen actually almost, almost at 100%. At two months, we have introduced the HEX, where we introduced to our system injectable polio because we are currently moving to hopefully to give all OBV injectable polio, uh, hopefully uh, getting ourselves for eradication. And again, we introduced the rotavirus and a pneumococcal conjugate vaccine. We give two plus one. Pneumococcal is given at two months, four months, and a year. Rotavirus is given at two months, four months, six months. And at Nine months, we have introduced conjugate meningococcal vaccine, and we, we gave an oral do dose of polyomyelitis. The meningococcal vaccine is given at 12 months again, and with it, we have given the conjugate vaccine, and also we have given the third dose of a pneumococcal vaccine. 
At 18 months, we move it to a penta, but a different penta. Here we are, we are giving T D A B, a cellular pertussis with hip and injectable polio, and we give also the second uh, second dose of MMR. At six years, we give uh, meningococcal. Uh, we give meningococcal conjugate vaccine plus DT plus OVV, and at 15 months, we give T D plus OBV plus we started the HPV as well. HPV was started in the year 13, the year 2013 for girls at uh, the age of 15 and we have given them three doses. I just mentioned a few things about human virus induction. It was in, in the year 13, uh, 2013 and was given for girls. This year, we went and moved the HPV to the age of 12. And to close the gap, we carried out a campaign where we immunized the age of 13 and 15. And those 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, all being immunized so far with the human coronavirus. Now, the last upgrade, or what is being implemented nowadays in our program, it is somewhat similar to what we have done in the year 2012 and 2013, but we have uh, made uh, some changes that the OBV, which was given at birth and given at, uh, at, 12, at, at, nine, at, at nine months, it is the BOBV because this is after the switch. But we carried out with the Hexab, plus Rotavirus, plus v BCV at two months, six months, and Rota plus the Hexab uh, at uh, six months. And we continued with the uh, meningococcal vaccine at nine months and 12 months. And we have introduced the Tetra. The Tetra here because we have introduced uh, TDAB plus OBV uh, at six uh, at six years, and also the meningococcal continued to be at six years. Uh, at twelve year, we uh, are m using now the human papilloma virus three doses for girls at the age of twelve, and meningococcal vaccine is given at the age of fifteen, nearly ten years after the last dose of six years plus TDAB. We have actually introduced Bertasis at the age of six years because we have conducted a study which probably I mentioned in my later talk and we look at, at the antibody teacher of Bertasis. Uh, it was a prospective study where we examined nine, eight, 791 children at school age, mean age about six years at their first year and we looked at the study and we found nearly 76 of them, they didn't have antibody at all, actually. So the night tag went on and decided to deduce the uh, TDAB at uh, six years and being uh, implemented. Uh, flu vaccine started since 19, uh, since the age, since 12, 11, and uh, we continued. And this is our figures so far. Uh, it is given uh, for both boys and girls the same, and uh, last year we were able to immunize uh, about 12 million plus, and uh, this year we have started immunization, and whenever we start the seasonal flu vaccine, actually we start a campaign. We announce in the radio and television, and the Minister of Health, the Central uh, Disease Central Control Directors, and the media, we try to monopolize, I think, so the intake of the vaccine actually in that week where we do the campaign, probably 90%, but we continue vaccination for the rest of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, the season. Uh, the high-risk group, as I remember, I think if we are going to target the high-risk group, uh, we have 1.5 million children at the age of five or six. We have a cohort of pregnant women of nearly a quarter of a million. Uh, we have diabetic patients, at least half a million, chronic respiratory disease and things like that. And if we put them all together, I'll say that perhaps half of the nation ought to be immunized. We will do it in a stages um, study, but I think we have to provide actually funds and things like that. And we're working with authority, and I'll show you how we're conducting our business as I go with my presentation. We have also a, 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 an immunization program for the adults. Hepatitis B, uh, seasonal flu, tetanus toxoid, whooping cough, meningococcal vaccine and also seriously, well, not seriously, it was decided that 
help the zoster and check spot sh chicken box should be part of our um, expand the immunization program but we are still waiting for for the funders but the decision was made by the uh, by the um, scientific body uh, we have conducted and we are conducting some studies to support our vaccine program and the Hubikov serological study at school was finished and it was presented at the uh, European Society of Pediatric Infectious Disease in Brighton in, 19, in the year 2016, and it is being accepted for publication in one of the European International Journals. Uh, and that study actually put us in a position uh, to introduce whooping cough as uh, a vaccination at the, as a booster dose at the age of six years. I am a pediatrician and I'm based at Tripoli Center Hospital, which is the biggest hospital, and we have about 360 beds. The, probably the biggest department. I think we see a little whooping cough, but whooping cough is a problem because uh, once we, we not eliminate the carrier, adults at, at it remains problem. And I think we are now put a protocol for uh, studying whooping cough uh, serologic states in pregnant women and perhaps in the babies that are there born. And the study is actually, the protocol is ready and we're just waiting for to implement it. Uh, we are actually now looking at uh, MMR, serological study in school children, about 800, and the analysis is going on, and I hope one day perhaps we'll be able to communicate this to the respected audience. Minigocal pharyngeal swab, it is being, uh, uh, it is being um, prepared, and I think we're just uh, waiting for the fund to conduct it, um, but I think we couldn't wait. We, we, we uh, as, as I said in our program, we give minigocal vaccine at nine months and 12 months. And we give it at school entry to close the gap, and we give it at 15 months. I think in, in about two, four years, then we'll close the gap between a first year and 12 years, and then we'll be perhaps at, uh, given at one year and 12 years, so 10 years gap, being conjugate uh, antigen, last will be uh, probably well enough to have a good memory to remember it if the individual child come with the, uh, with the bugs. The meningococcal study will actually involve 10 to 21. Uh, I, think, uh, uh, I think the study will be for 1,200 uh, 1200 patients, 600 boys and 600 girls, and this will be uh, conducted in the uh, capital city of Tripoli. Now, we are immunizing against hepatitis B for the last nearly 30 years. And I think we... Every now and then, then we see hepatitis A, and I think we, uh, we are having to have a study looking at hepatitis A in school-aged children. If the teeter is very high, it means that everybody is infecting each other, so we don't need to have a vaccine program. And if the teeter is low, it means most of the people are immune and probably there's no problem. But I, can, I think it will be an intermediate and if that's the case, hepatitis A will be introduced to our vaccine program. We try to be as scientific, not like the other speaker, but as, as scientific as we can. Now, what is about what is particular about our vaccine program? Our vaccine program is enforced by law. Since 1971, vaccination is a mandatory that children has to be immunized, children cannot be registered in municipality, children also cannot go to school. The public, Libyan public is very aware and we don't have any problem. I remember when I went to the serological study of Hubin Kaffa, I went myself with the team since I am well, their professor. And uh, I talked to so many parents and actually children was queuing and we examined 791 and none of them doesn't have a vaccine card, and none of them doesn't have his vaccine card not fully ticked. So I was very pleased. I went very happy. I think we are living in a country that the last case of superbolites was in 1991. I haven't seen a hepatitis, a hepatitis B in a child, and I'm based at the hospital where there are 360 beds for children in a child for the last 25 years or so. So it means, and when we talk to the nation, we say, the vaccine is working. Once it is working, and it is working because of the law, the law is very important. So peaceful means of law by the authority 
it helped us and put us in a very strong position to talk and to direct the nation to hopefully to the right direction. It is given, it is kept as a government monopoly. Vaccine is not sold in Libya. The word reimbursement is not existing. So everybody gets the vaccine on the Libyan soil for free, free of charge. Free of charge for all, expatriates, refugees, working force, just they go and register themselves and they take it for free. And I think by that, we have a major control. Private sector, we provide them with the, with the vaccine. The health clinic, we just made a decision that they just go to the headquarters in Tripoli or, or Magazi or where, and they just put a list of their workforce and it will be supplied for them on the spot. They just give us the names when they come back, they say tot, 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 and make sure that they don't keep the vaccine and not to be used. The most important force behind us and a lot of really uh, driving force, it comes from the Libyan public. The Libyan public is very, very aware about vaccination. And if their child is not vaccinated, they are prepared to take the airplane and travel to neighboring either Turkey or Egypt or Tunisia to get their children vaccination. And that's put us in a position, even in front of the decision making, that this is a very, very serious state of affair and vaccine ought to be provided. Now, if you look at this country, this is WHO, uh, how many antigen we give in our vaccine? I think we probably given 17 antigen. Okay, Libya is labeled that more than 11, but if you count them, 17 action. We give even vaccine for rabies. We treat uh, um, snakes, bites. We have uh, treatment for it, uh, uh, scorpion bite, but that's probably snakes and bison vaccine, but we give about 17 vaccine. We, we give yellow fever. Uh, we give typhoid for food handlers. And I think this is being uh, centrally controlled and drafted. Now, what, what, what public health benefit we have? To have a vaccine, you have to have infrastructure. You have to have a cold ch chain. You have to have a technician, engineers. You have to have a mandala. You have to have very disciplined people that work 24 hours a day, especially in the last conflicts. Every now and then, I think we, uh, we get electricity cut and that might actually just uh, d d destroy our vaccine. I think, yes, this is very expensive, but the reward on that is much more than this. I always say you are living, despite the conflict, Libya now in a, a civil war and conflict for the last seven years, but nothing has increased. Nothing is noticeable has been changed from whatever before, and the vaccine recovery, the vaccine program is still running in the 90s. And also you have to have a very effective and sustainable vaccine. People have the reward that they immunize their children against measles and against general measles and uh, against uh, 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 whooping cough. I'm being vaccinated now, I was trained in the UK. I'm being vaccinated before the last 30 years. The only case I saw of tetanus in your autonomy in a child from Chad, and he was born at home, and he came to the hospital, and luckily enough, he was ventilated and survived, but that's the only case I saw. I get informed about what is, through our surveillance system about what's going on in the country. The an effective sustainable immunization program is the cornerstone for the healthcare services, particularly in the critical prenatal and early infancy period. These are the most important period. This is the time, if you pass it, I think you'll be okay for the rest of your life. The man, this is investment. And it is estimated, I just looked at the literature, at least a 12 to 18% investment, and this is actually underestimation. Vaccine is investment. A smith, a smith, uh, investment in health, you will have a healthy people, a productive people, not physically or mentally handicapped, and you spend million and million of them, and by the end of the day, you get nowhere. In a recent publication study, I'm sure many of you are aware, uh, aware of this, that it was done in, the, in America by the um, Center of Disease of uh, Prevention, Center of Disease of Control and Prevention, and this is done between, they looked into those who are immunized between 1994 and 2013, and they say and he, they have prevented 322 million illnesses, 21 million hospitalization, and 723 premature deaths. 
at a cost of nearly 2,295 billion in real costs and at a societal cost of 1.38 trillion. A massive amount of money that is saved by vaccine exercise. Now, sustainment of efficacy of the BI during the conflict. Our vaccine program is kept in full, including the fighting zones. They allowed us to immunize the children completely. A new vaccine has been introduced during, the, during these conflict years. We have introduced uh, pneumococcal, meningococcal, rota, HPV, and seasonal flu. And in our part, really, we know that the country is having a difficult position, so we said they have to do our best and do whatever possible to save the children and the country from what happens if such a program collapses. We have renewed our chain completely. We have supplied the, uh, our system chain by 505 refrigerators and boxes. So we have total renewal last year and this year for our chain. We have carried four campaigns for more education between 2014 and 2017. One in the 2014 when there are reported cases from Syria that they have pariatic polio, probably it was vaccine derived though. Uh, but we said, and we see a lot of Syrian refugees through the sea. So we target children under the age of five, and we're supposed to immunize 1.245 million, one a quarter of a million, I think we immunize 1.3, 1.3.5 million, 100,000 more because those who are uh, above the virus into system and he said we're, we're, we're immunizing them. We have done two campaigns in the year 2016, one just when we switched from TOBV to OBV and I I actually we immunized the target group and this year, in October this year, we carried two campaigns for polio and MMR. Hearing the news from Italy that there are some small outbreaks and Italy and us we are not far. Italy has colonized Libya for 40 years, they are our friends. And uh, so we uh, went and ammonized the, the, uh, uh, the, uh, those who were born at the age of 12, uh, 2012, 2013 and 2014. The target group was 690 and we ammonized 720 plus. And uh, we ammunized zero to six years for for polio, and we are we are targeting uh, one million three hundred and eighty, and we ammunized one million four hundred and forty plus. I think uh, this is allowing for uh, expatriate and refugees and things like that. So uh, there were a few thousand uh, extra than the target age group. Coverage rate of the campaign was as expected, more than nineties. And actually, it was witnessed by the WHO and UNICEF and non-government organization. And uh, in fact, the results of the campaign was discussed in the headquarter of the region uh, in Tunisia with WHO. And uh, they were very pleased to see such a thing being done. Laman, I will not talk about antibiotic resistance. It was mentioned by previous professors. And I think, yes, vaccine prevents antibiotic resistance. So we don't need to have uh, uh, antibiotic will probably a, a right way of tackling it. Uh, yeah, uh, improvement in infant mortality, I think many years ago, I think the infant mortality in Libya was 50%. I'm talking about the 50s and 60s. Now it is, now, it is now, now, now it is nine per thousand. This has been improved to so many factors. But vaccines is probably one of the most of bad factors. So women can use to have many children because they say many, mo mo most of them will die or nearly all of them die. Now children can survive and can reach adult life and can be productive. And in a country like Libya, we need children. I am a pediatrician and I, I come from a big family myself. I have 10 brothers. I am one of the 11th. And all of them are on my, at my capacities. Our parents look very well after us, and yeah, we, despite we are, we are a big family, but all my brothers are professors in their own field. So Libya needs more population, and I am in favor of that. 
and that will have a very significant effect on the health and welfare of the country. Safe travel and mobility, uh, the biggest gathering in the world that happens in the pilgrim to, to Mecca, and all our, our, our has they get seasonal flu and meningococcal vaccine. Also, we give travels to other countries, especially in risk area in Africa, we give them yellow fever and meningococcal vaccine, it depends on the guidelines we have in our department. Now, vaccine prevents many other diseases. Cancer, and I think uh, the professor has said much more than I have said. It prevents congenital anomalies uh, and mental sedation, and uh, this is congenital liberal syndrome. I am a pediatrician. We have a continuous surface in place for congenital liberal syndrome. I haven't seen a case for decades now. And I think, what do you do for somebody who is mentally retarded? I always see the student, I say, we are giving, when we give uh, congenital rubella, when we give um, measles, um, German measles vaccine, they say, well, we give it to, uh, at such a date. <laughs> I say, to whom? He said, to, uh, to boys and girls. I say, why do you have nice girl, boys? We know that the boys didn't ever get pregnant, so they get shaky and uh, lose temper, and, and I just, uh, I just, uh, recover them and change the, 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 uh, otherwise they will fail the exam. They start saying so many things. I think it's the herd immunity. You have to immunize everybody. I, w I hope, uh, Professor, that one day, and I think we discussed it, that we can immunize boys against human polymavirus. And if it happens, we'll do it. I hope, I pray that things will settle and nothing cheap and nothing is, is effective like vaccine. The best thing discovered in the world. And I think we should stand for it. Now, these uh, we are really closing operatic polio. This picture will be reviewed in the library. They will not be existing. This is the greatest achievement of the World Health Organization and that we can eradicate such small uh, such disease as small books and polymyelites and many to come. I haven't seen a case. The only case of subacute sclerosis mechanics, I saw it when I was uh, being trained as a registrar in the UK 40 years ago. But I haven't seen a case for Libya at all, and I work in the biggest center in the country. Uh, uh, cervical cancer. We had, a lot of, we had a lot of opposition when we introduced, and the night tag actually met the prime minister to state the case in a nice way that we introduced the uh, human coronavirus. Meningococcal disease is a very dangerous disease, and every now and then, a child gets a disease, and with no warning, they just disappear like anything. So that's why we went to the extent and we are giving four doses. And the plan in the future that most of the antibiotics for that will be given 10 years. We'll wait for the evidence, but we are very keen that tetanus toxoid, hepatitis B, whooping cough, I think we have about 50 centers for adult vaccinology is being built up, and we look at it very carefully. We consult with the scientific body, we consult with the debate show, and once we decide, the, decide is, the decision is ours. Now, you might ask, how do you conduct your work? We, there is an interaction between all these sects. The night tag and central resistance control is in the middle, but we act with all of them. We don't like to have opponent in our philosophy to our vaccine program. We would like to have support. We are very patient. We select our words, but we are very eager and very determined that the vaccine program should be sustained and should go. Several times I sat with the Prime Minister. Several times I sat with the Government Bank of Libya. Several times I sat with the financial control Several, the, the health minister several times attended the meeting, several, several times, where is a decision to be made, it just we talk to them transparent, transparently, we talk to them truthfully, and the Libya public has a great trust, but we never said anything wrong with them, and if we talk to them exactly what is the score, and they believe in us, and it is a very important that we keep that trust, because that's the strength of our program. 
So, ladies and gentlemen, Yani, sorry, I'm not right here. No, sorry. Yani, to this, yani sustainability, sustainability of the program itself is the sustainability of the health of of the health service. If the program is sustained and still practicing, the health service is being uh, sustained. Yeah, innovation and thinking all the time and getting everybody involved and manipulation of the whole nation to stand on the program is a very, very important and we made it in the uh, vaccine program. Come on, vaccination is considered the most successful and most effective medical intervention ever being introduced. And I just, uh, before I close up, the, the picture on the right is from the east from Salinaikia, that's the ruin of our neighbors, Greece. And the pictures are from the, on your left hand, Andy, from a great, big, big, ma Lebdes Magna. Lebdes Magna is to the east of Tripoli, and it is uh, 5,000 years old. And it is the biggest fifth listed city in the world. There's a lot of ruin and a lot of history there. That's our seaside, and this is uh, nearly 1,000 kilometers south of Tripoli. That there is a lake called Gabraon, and you can see the, the beauty of the sand. And this is in the eastern part of eastern mountain in the seaside. And I would like to thank you very much. <laughs>